Hi and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It is May 31st, 2015 and I just wanted to take you on a tour of the garden, show you how things are growing on and uh, maybe I hopefully will remember to share a tip or two. <laughs> um, as you can see I have some uh, yellow squash growing on there, crookneck. I have uh, other squash plants on different places in the garden or another place, but um, I want to show you something here real quick. Thing. Speaking of tips, it might be a little hard to see. Okay, see where my hand is here, All right? So this yellow petal blossom on the bottom. I know it's hard to see. In fact, you can't see it. But on the bottom, I could feel there's a zucchini there. All right, I could feel the fe uh, I can feel the fruit. Okay. And I know that this plant's gonna, this flower's gonna open up tomorrow morning, 99.99% sure. It's gonna open up tomorrow morning. And these yellow blossoms uh, are the telltale sign that this is ready to open up the next morning. And that works true for male flowers and female flowers on your zucchinis, squash, pumpkins, and things of that nature. Okay, plants in those families, the cucurbits family. So that's a quick little tip for that. Alright, so I'll be ready to pollinate that in the morning, if I remember. <laughs> Taking a quick peek at the onions. You can see the bulbs, and these are all small size. Look at that, it's not very big. But these are supposed to be some of these Granix Yellows and the Texas Sweets and, and uh, Walla Wallas. Kind of a mixture. And, uh, you know, they're small onions. They're not very, really all that big. But I, look, I think they still have more time to go. They're, so I'm not too worried. You can see uh, this is going on like that, growing on. So, uh, but take a look at this here. Here's uh, one onion uh, flower head. And uh, so I don't know why this thing is already going to seed this particular uh, one right here. Can feel down there, and it's not like it's got a huge head or anything like that, or a huge bulb. So, I don't know why it's doing that. And uh, you can see here's another one right here, recently developed, and it's the petals. So, that'll form the seed head for some onions. So, oh, and here's another one, just discover that one. <laughs> okay, oh, I see a couple more now that I'm looking around a little bit more. So I don't know why that's happening. Usually onion heads take a lot longer. Uh, I would have thought to uh, produce a seed, but uh, these things going pretty fast, some of them. That's strange. All right, so anywho, there's a tomato plant right there. Um, I don't know what variety it is yet until it starts to set some fruit, then I'll be able to tell, because I'm growing better boy, and then I have one plant that's a man of orange um, but look down here, Asha Taba, also known as Angelica Kiske. These are the seeds that I got from John Kohler. Okay, and here's another Asha Taba plant right there. Okay, and uh, there's five, there, these things are starting to take off and get uh, a little bigger now. And I have two more there that I gotta really get planted out because I think that's going to help some of these yellowing that I have here. They're probably starving for some nutrients. So, I'm going to see what I can do here uh, to d take care of that. Now, look at this monstrosity. I'm going to get down on eye level here. And this, this, that's that white material you see is the tool material that I use to cover these plants to protect them from squash bugs and squash vine borers. But look at all these leaves. These things are, these are for my zucchinis and my squash. These things are huge as always. I'm not surprised by that, but good Lord, you know. <laughs> And I, I'm going to get ready to replace this tool material with um, a special net that I bought. Here's a look down inside. And I do have, and I do have some squash that are, are um, growing on here. Oh, I see one. Let's show you right here. I see the crookneck right here. This one definitely got pollinated right here. And I got a couple others. Now, last night it was kind of interesting. I uh, I took off a, uh, you know, there's some more in there. That AC just kicked on. I um, came out last night and I harvested uh, some of my Amana orange 
uh, tomatoes last night and um, here's my Amana orange plant tomato plant right here and you see it's right there so that's probably just about ready um, and I have others growing in there you can see a couple there and down there and there's some more blossoms up on top but um, I harvested a couple two about three of those and um, I had a little baby onion uh, that the all the leaves had been broken over so I knew that wasn't going to grow anymore so I just said all right I was going to pull that and I took one of my squash crookneck squash that were ready and I uh, took that off there harvested all that stuff and uh, took it into the house cooked it up in a little bit of olive oil in the skillet you know add just a pinch of salt and I also cut up the uh, the onion greens the uh, the, le the leaves of the onion so that was uh, that was pretty good so these things are starting to get pretty tall and I'm having to hook them onto the net now and then uh, tie them more to the pole. You can see my little twine right there, or little uh, string. I don't usually like to like, use that kind, but that's just what I have available. And uh, all that oregano in there. Two plants did all that. <laughs> and you can see yeah, I want to show you some things here, some parts of the plant. These are my musk melon slash honeydew. That's what they were labeled as. They had the little slash mark. And uh, these are sending out a couple of different vines, but this is the main vine. And you can see this little spaghetti piece right here. It looks like a piece of spaghetti. This is a this is what's called a tendril. And pumpkin plants have them, squash and, and, and zucchini, I believe, have them. But things generally in the Kirkabitz family, in the melon family, they have these uh, tendrils. And these things are help um, secure the plant and withstand uh, wind storms and things like that. And what these things do is you can manually wrap them around a trellis net or whatever. But they will lock on to pretty much anything they can get a hold of, you know. They can, uh, they'll lock onto blades of grass, they'll lock onto pencils if you have them lying in their way. Anything you can get a hold of to, to uh, grab, that's exactly what it will do. And see, this is help trains it to climb up the trellis and thus saving you space. And here's another vine right back here off the same plant that's going in the opposite direction. And what I can do is I can carefully bend this around and I can put things in its path, like I could put a popsicle stick down the ground and put it up against this, the vine here, and that'll force it to start turning and won't allow it to go that way. And then I can keep curving it around, curving it around, bring it back up here, and then hang it up on the trellis. So that way it's not interfering with other plants and I can more easily get to them. Okay, and again, here's another um, muskmelon, and here's a huge, look at that tender, look how long that thing is, all the way out to here. <laughs> So, you know, I can, sometimes they want to uh, wrap around a certain direction, you know, and that's okay. I don't want to fight it. I'll go, you want to wrap around that way easily? I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay. And sometimes these break off a little bit in your hand. That's okay. See, that's all you got to do. It might unwind just a smidge, but that's okay. And you can see how this one right here is reaching out and wants to it wants to uh, join into, but it will. Okay, so these are my like I said, these are my musk melons, and uh, I could I can get that one train that up and tie it on, and so that's just about ready. And these things have been producing male flowers. Oh, look at this vine coming right off of this one. Here it comes. See, when it gets long enough, I'll reach it up there and connect it. And look at these things all coming out here. So this is my first time with musk melons slash honeydews. Okay, and on those there is a an example of a male flower right there. Okay, there's no fruit on the bottom of it, so this is a male flower. All right, and the male flowers are showing up first because they're trying to uh, get the bees and the uh, pollinating insects to to uh, get used to coming over and visiting. That way it can. Uh, you know, help itself to get ready to, you know, be pollinated and whatnot. Not sure what that is right there. <laughs> Maybe some bird decided to use my stuff. As a ba uh, my zucchini plant here is a bathroom. <laughs> but 
but right over here I have these uh, Armenian yard long cucumbers first time I'm trying those and you can see here's a vine going out in the opposite direction I'll curve it back around and hook it back up and all that kind of good stuff and you can see on the cucumbers here's the tendrils and I'm latching it onto the trellis and letting it go up same thing with the muskmelons and you can see how it's going up and going up right there and there is Oh, wait a minute, wait just a cotton pick a minute. What do I, no, 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 no. I think that's a, right there. That's gotta be a male. The fruit would be much more identifiable than that. So, and then you can look inside and you can tell there's the stamen versus the stigma. Now, this over here, don't know how long it's gonna take to develop. But it looks like it's coming on. This is my, what I believe to be my lemon cucumber. The only one that survived the uh, fungus gnat invasion, <laughs> which I get every year. But look at this. See, look at this thing. This tendril. I want to show you a good example of that. Here you go. So here's this Armadian yard long cucumber. Okay. Here's a, this is the vine. That's go, one of the vines that's going in the opposite direction. And I try to pull it back but it's attached. Let me see if I can get you a good shot. See that little right there? A little spaghetti finger coming off right there? My finger's right behind it. Coming off the stem and it's going right there and it has grabbed a hold of this um, oregano and it's wrapped itself around it. And now I will undo that because I don't want that thing going in that direction and I will bring it back around and have it go this uh, direction towards me. Okay. Oh, now that I touched the oregano, it smells so good. Oh, makes me hungry for some spaghetti. <laughs> um, you can see some of my tomatoes uh, are coming in blossom. Now, I've had some issues with critters. I don't know what kind. Birds, perhaps, coming in here and pecking the bottoms of the, um, or eating the bottoms of my tomatoes, just as they're almost completely ripe. So that's been bumming me out about that. So things are growing on really, really well. And, uh, pardon me for the uh, air conditioning coming on. Um, now, these are my uh, cantaloupes, actual labeled cantaloupes. And you can see the male flowers down in there. And again, these are finding out. These have tendrils and everything. And they're doing their thing. All right, and again, they have multiple vines coming out in different directions. As you can see, this one right here is going in, back in towards the zucchini, so I'm having to train these. And again, I have a trellis here for them to go up. Okay, so these are my first time growing uh, cantaloupe. Again, I mentioned in previous videos, I'm not a fan necessarily of cantaloupe myself. However, I know my family does like them, and I do enjoy the smell of them move away that AC, the air conditioning unit so it doesn't uh, hurt y'all's ears. <laughs> but, um, all right, so let's take you over. But I do love the smell of uh, cantaloupe. I do love the smell. I'm not a fan necessarily of the taste. Okay, down here, these things have uh, been coming back alive and I haven't even harvested any yet. This plant, this one's doing really well. This is the longevity spinach. It kind of has a, kind of to describe the texture of the leaves. They're not smooth. They're a little coarse, a little rough feeling. And uh, over here I have sunflowers. I don't know what kind, you know. Up, oh, see now this one, that one's doing really well. I mean, look at that one. That's just only been in there for maybe three weeks. And look at how much that's doing. And this one, not quite doing as well. It doesn't look quite as healthy. Leaves aren't as huge or not as green as the other one, but it's it's trying to hang on. Um, here's my Fuji apple tree right here. I just got these of, uh, back at the uh, late winter, and this is my honey crisp, and you can see that leader going up there. And uh, I actually I tried to find some organic spray, but I really couldn't find an organic spray at my local big box store that uh, 
that was designed for a specific disease or fungus that I think this particular one was having, which I think it was at the beginning stages of uh, apple, apple cedar rust disease. And let's see if I can find, I don't want to get you guys all seasick or anything. Let me see if I can find something that shows what I'm, what I was seeing. And again, I believe I caught this at the beginning stages. Well, I can see a couple, but I just don't know if it's going to show up on camera for you guys. All right, there you go. That should be showing up. See those yellowy orange spots right there on the leaf? Okay. I do believe, let's check the bottom of the leaf. And uh, it's, it's kind of hard to tell in this lighting and whatnot, but I'm, it, maybe it's starting, it looks like it's starting to show through. Um, and uh, so I believe this is apple cedar rust disease or fungus. And so I had to uh, kind of go against one of my own rules, which was trying to stay 100% organic. But sometimes, you know, I'm, you know, I had to act quickly because I didn't want the stuff to keep on spreading. You know, I paid a lot of money for these apple trees. You know, and this is an investment in the future, uh, you know, to provide me and my family some food, you know. And I want to make the, everything is organic, except I did have to use that spray, which was not organic. To try to, uh, but it was the only thing I could find at the time that has, uh, can handle the fungus and, and things like that. So I'm really hoping that I don't have to use that stuff again. Um, let me take you over to uh, the strawberries are pretty much done. Oh, the peppers. Oh, basil too. So I have a basil plant there and a basil plant there and they're doing really well. They have come on. You see how it's kind of all compact and bushy? That's because I've been pruning these just by pinching off the tops just above the, the uh, a, a set of baby leaves that are down below on the stem. I pinch just above it and that allows the the plant to keep on producing basil leaves for me and not going to seed. And my peppers that I pruned are really starting to look um, look pretty good. You can see I have, move this leaf out of the way here, flower blossoms. And if you want to ever pollinate these things, just kind of like take your finger in there, just kind of rub like that. These are self-pollinating, but it doesn't hurt to uh, do these kind of little things like that. Just rub around inside there gently in the circles circular pattern and I have other uh, blossoms as you can see now these plants really look pretty bad a while ago but they're really doing good now and that pruning technique that I use that I learned from Praxis uh, on his channel really produces a lot of peppers for me last year and basically kind of what you're doing is you just uh, after you get three or four true uh, three or four um, sets of true leaves you pinch off the main growing stem and what that does is it forces the uh, side shoots it forces the little growth that's in the crotch area of a leaf stem section and the main stem and it forces those to start growing and that's exactly what it's been doing okay you can see right here these are pretty new leaves but they've been growing for a few weeks now and it's, it was slow growing at first but now these things are starting to really take off. They're really greening up a lot. And um, why some leaves just flip themselves over, I don't understand that. <laughs> but I've seen that on pepper plants. And unfortunately, I did ha I did spray the same thing that I did on the apple trees. I sprayed it on these pepper plants because I, I was noticing that my leaves were starting to um, start to cup. See how that's, that's kind of an upside down view. But um, sorry, I'm trying to avoid tripping over things these things were sort of like cupping a little bit and I was noticing what possibly could be spider mite damage I'm not sure um, so I just I went ahead and sprayed them I wasn't happy about doing that but it's like you know what I had I was gonna use it I'm, you know you do the best you can sometimes with what you have available and I didn't have things like neem oil available right now for me to go ahead and start spraying uh, hopefully in um, in the very near future, in the next month or so, I'll be able to get some neem oil and then I can switch to things like that. But uh, this is what I had, so I used it 
and I didn't want to lose um, lose these plants to any kind of um, bugs or whatnot uh, because I was just these things are really coming on they're starting to produce the flowers now um, that I've been waiting for but not and again when you prune your pepper plants these this is a short-term loss for a long-term gain so you, you cut off that main stem after three or four sets of true leaves you pinch it off and whatnot and then it thickens up the stem at the base which was going to which will allow it to handle more of a, a heavier um, crop later on because it'll thicken up and get stronger and also you're allowing your root system to develop further so it will ha produce more for you too so it's really a win-win situation and all these side shoots start growing growing out and they start putting on more leaves and then they start putting on flowers on that section and then on another section of your plant and more and more so you've got like three or four side shoots that start growing out and start producing uh, flowers for you and fruit so this thing will start putting on tons of peppers I can't believe how much I had last year. It was unbelievable. I had, I'm had i scaled back to nine plants this year. I think last year I had somewhere like 20, 15 maybe, 15 to 20 plants, I think. And um, this year I'm going, I cut back to nine. Uh, so, uh, the let me take you over to the blackberries. It's getting dark out here. And you can see the fruit developing. And though most of the uh, fruit has already been set and going, I still have uh, flowers that are blooming. Now, again, you can do the same things with these like you do with peppers. These are self-pollinating blackberries, of course. And you can just go in there and rub it around, rub around the male and female parts together like that. Okay? And you can get it to uh, pollinate. So you don't have to... Uh, buy sprays but those sprays those blossom set sprays do help quite a bit they are a lifesaver when you don't have male flowers around or you just want to help ensure that you will uh, or at least increase increase your likelihood of getting um, your blossoms to set and you know then look at the size of a blackberry leaf <laughs> that's huge that fits right in the palm of my hand big one like that it's cupping a little bit so I was just wondering if that was a uh, any bug damage but I got all these uh, blackberries uh, plants here and they they seem like I'm gonna get a pretty good crop this plant actually is kind of looking a little a little sickly part of it looks I mean look at the same part right here all right nice and healthy looking this is a brand new growth right here I got some new flowers up in there. Look at that. Hiding in there. I see ya. <laughs> but, um, so this looks very healthy right over here. But then you move over here, and this looks pale green. It's not really looking very good. So I might have to spray something on here or cut that part off and save the whole plant or something. <laughs> the plant's not going to die. I'm just being silly. And here are some more flower blossoms on different varieties of plants of mine. And last but certainly not least, I'm not going to go inside the uh, mesh netting here that I have to cover all my blueberries. But I just wanted to show you, and I, I apologize for the lighting and everything. But you can see all those blueberries in there coming, uh, changing all their colors and everything. Alright. So all those blueberries more blueberries yum 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 come down here more blueberries and I have these I have different varieties but the two that are, are blooming earliest or that are ripening earlier than the others are the uh, sweetheart variety and um, that's kind of a brand, fairly brand new one but you can see all the blue in there and I have a lot of blueberries that are not ready yet but that's okay because Look at all these other blueberries. Look at all that. It's showing up as pale white uh, fruit, but uh, you know these. I have tons of these, and, and thank goodness for this net. Now this net's a 28 foot by 28 foot um, net, and I got it from a pool uh, pool company online. And they, they make these uh, nets to cover up your little fish ponds and stuff like that from debris and keeping birds 
from going in there and eating your fish out of your pond. Um, and this is a 3 8 inch mesh. And I think I'm going to use this as a dual uh, thing. Uh, where this net is, of course is staying on here for the birds but I have other nets to cover up my vegetable plants to keep out the squash bugs and the squash vine pores. At least that's my hope that, that that will work. Okay so but I've been eating a few of these blueberries off of here uh, when they become ripe and the way you know that they're ripe is when yeah you see the color but if they don't, if the blueberries don't fall off easily into your hand when you go and kind of lightly touch them, then then forget it. It's not it's not ready. Even though they may look ready, they're not ready unless those things fall off, practically fall off right in your hand with just the slightest little touch or the slightest little pull. Okay, uh, I don't think there's anything much else left to talk about. But I will show you the uh, the thing that I have here. So this is a 14 foot by 14 foot. And this is from a different company that I bought that from. It says Best Garden 14 by 14 Pond Netting. And you notice it says 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch mesh poly, polypropylene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang those, hang it over my squash and zucchini plants as I was mentioning just a moment ago. And um, hopefully that'll keep, hopefully that 3 8 inch mesh is small enough to keep squash bugs and uh, squash vine boar moths out. Because if that works, then I just found my, I just found my new weapon against the, uh, those dreaded bugs that just kill everything that's in the cucurbits family in, in my area. So, I've been battling those things for seven to eight years now. <laughs> so, you know, hey, keep trying every year, keep trying every year. Oh, real quick, it's getting dark real right there. Watermelon. Watermelon. And, well, more watermelon. Okay, so, uh, I just had... Uh, a little small area right here to uh, work with and I'm just gonna put up a trellis and let them go to the trellis and I have my pumpkin hammocks if you remember from last year the ones I made out of burlap and uh, manila rope I made those and um, you know I'm going to use those for the watermelons this year if I, if everything works out and I'll just hook up a trellis right in here and let it do its thing so, all right, from Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, oh, look, there goes the bird, boop, <laughs> from Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch, let's take a look at those onions, come on, get bigger, 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 well, if they don't, this is my first year trying them, so, I'll keep learning, see if I get bigger ones, and I'll be happy with what I get, all right, so, from Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch, the sun is down. <laughs> Have a good evening. May 31st, 2015. In the books.